In this video, we're going to create a hex map, visualizing industrial density. A hex map is short for a hexagonal grid map, which is terrible to pronounce. As a name, hex map is much sexier. We'll be doing this in two steps. First, we'll create a grid. You could make your grid square, which is quite common, but there are some good arguments for using a hex grid. One of them being that the shape of a hexagon is a closer approximation of a circle, meaning that you have a more even distribution of the points within all the grid cells. Second, we'll count the points from the LISA dataset in each grid cell. And third, we're going to visualize the grid using these values. In the meantime, we'll of course be looking into some common pitfalls. Let us assume that we're interested in industrial companies. So I've set the filter on the ELISA dataset and I've set it to Hoofdgroep is Industrie. That means the main category is industrial. Well, now we're just having the industrial companies. One of the things we could do here is just have a look at how all the points are divided. And we can, of course, enlarge the points by, for example, the size of the company. But we could also make a kind of a heat map out of it. Or a density map. In this case I'm going for a hexagonal density map. So first we're going to create um, a grid and we can use the map canvas as our uh, grid area. So let's have a look. We don't want Amsterdam involved, just uh, Rotterdam Hague area. Mm, part of the mass flux is here. Yeah, let's, uh, this, this might be more or less the right skill for this. So we're going to uh, create a grid first. We're going to make a hexagonal grid. The extent we're going to set to our map canvas. We could also of course have a more detailed uh, data set here, for example a province or a whole country. Um, the spacing, um, let's take 500 meters uh, for every uh, object and we'll keep it as a temporary layer. So now you have a hexagonal grid over um, as, a, as an extra layer and it just covers this piece of, uh, of the Randstad, the Delta Metropole. Next what we do is we're going to count how many companies are in each grid cell. And not only the companies but we're going to use the full-time equivalent for uh, the number of employees again. So let's have a look here. We're going to uh, count points in Polygon. Uh, we're going to uh, use the grid as the polygons. The points are the LISA data set. Um, we could add a weight field here and we could, for example, the full-time equivalents again. We're not using a class field. You can read the exact uh, input here. Uh, but for now, the full time, the number of full time employed people uh, might be interesting. Uh, so we could say here the employees. We'll make another temporary layer here. And this might take some time because both uh, the point data set and the grid do not have an, um, a spatial index. But as you can see, it is pretty fast. Now our count grid. Uh, it's got all different values. So if I look one up, you can see here that there's zero employees here. There's probably uh, a different number in different cells. So let's have a look. We're going to style this layer. We're going to use a graduated fill based on the employees field that we just created here. Classify this one. And as you can see, there is a very weird classification going on around here. Now let's first change this to a nicer color. And then, okay, let's put every cell with where no companies, where no one is working in one category, so in one class. So that's what we have here. This, for example, could be if somebody's working alone or one, this is for smaller companies, up to 10 people, mid sized companies, up to 100 and larger companies of over 100 employees. So this gives a different view of 
the area. Uh, next, what we can do is that we can use the blending mode and make that multiply so that you can see the map right through it. Another thing that we could do here is uh, that we could, at this point, um, the fill symbol still has a solid line in black. We can make that a little bit lighter, so that's a slightly more friendly. Now if we zoom in now, we can see that this is a, a density map with a background layer um, underneath it. Now let's check if this is more or less correct. It's always good to uh, to do a little basic check. So here you see Delft, you see here the Schieufers area. So yeah, I can imagine that there's people working in industry in the Schieufers area and in this small uh, business park as well. So yeah, that sounds logical. Let's have a look. Uh, I know that here are the large uh, areas in the harbor in Rotterdam and this, this might seem a bit off because you see all these um, hexagonals there's zero people working but as you can see here this one has 2400 people working um, and this is probably where the main office is for this whole area so you cannot say exactly that there's no one working here because the address of the company is of course on just one location and not spread out all over the whole area. So yeah, it, it gives you a good insight in uh, where people work, but perhaps not exactly as you would expect it. So be careful with this, um, but it gives a really good insight in where people are working.